So uh, we'll start. Mr. Gant, if you will, Chairman Gant, please. Actually, you know, you'll sit right there. Okay. Thank you, and I'd like to thank the League and the Urban News and Mountain Express and all the other sponsors. And thank you for coming out, because it is important that you know where we stand on issues, what we believe in, and whether our beliefs and our ideas of county government is consistent with what you believe in. We're coming out of one of the worst financial messes we've had since the Depression. Everybody here knows that. And what county commission needs to do, and what we have been trying to do, is to get new jobs in here. We're trying to have an efficient government. We're trying to encourage people to expand their businesses, as well as get new businesses in here. One thing I've learned is I've had, had the good fortune to have meals with Sierra Nevada uh, Brewery President, uh, Linamar Manufacturing President, and New Belgium President. They all kind of said the same thing about why they came here. They said, part of it's the incentives, that puts you in the ball game, but what really gets us to come here is your quality of life. And that means we support education, you have a good system to raise our kids, because the president of Sierra Nevada said, I went and we were ready to sign up with another group. But we were get, just as we were getting ready to sign the final papers, my son looked up and says, I don't want to raise my family here. I want to go to Asheville. And so they moved to Henderson County, of course, not Black Mountain, which was another site. So we have a responsibility. Education, make sure people have job opportunities, make sure that we do the best we can to make to have everybody have an, a, a good place to live, take care of our mountains, take care of farmers and farmlands, and we want a chance to continue doing that. If elected, those are the basics I'm going to be working on, and I look forward to your questions later on. Thank you. All right, Mr. Howard. Yes, my name is J.B. Howard. I was born and raised here in Buncombe County. I left here at the age of 17, joined the U.S. Army. Left the Army, went to work for the State Highway Patrol. While with the patrol, I worked, worked full time, got an AA degree in police science and a BS degree in criminal justice, and have gotten 30 hours on my master's. After my retirement from Highway Patrol, I opened a business covering two disciplines. One was security, the other was investigations. About five years ago, I sold my security business. I still have the investigative business. During that time, I've had as high as 350 employees. I had to write all rules and regulations, policies and procedures, pay them. I know about signing paychecks. Uh, the present leadership in Buncombe County has failed miserably. We need new leadership, new direction, and competence in there and stop catering to one specific group within this county. All right. Again, if you have a question, raise your hand and we will bring you an index card and then we will gather those questions and phones off. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to start with a very broad stroke question then. I will start with you, Mr. Gant, if we may. Uh, broad stroke, what is the biggest issue facing the county, and how would you address it? The biggest issue facing the county is to make sure people have jobs and have a chance to work if they choose to do so. We want to keep the quality of life high while we're encouraging business development. We've got to run the county efficiently. One of the things we've done is we've achieved for the first time in Buncombe County history a AAA bond rating. What that means to us all is that outside people have looked at our organization, what we're doing, how we're spending money, and said we're among the leaders in the country. We, the other result of the AAA bond rating that we recently achieved is that we just refinanced our construction projects for 1.7% interest, which means all of us pay a lot less money. We've got to watch government. We have less people working for government now than we did 20 years ago, and we need to keep going down that road while we support education, while we take care of our employees, and while we make sure that we keep the quality of life that brought us all here in the first place. All right, thank you, Mr. Gant. 
Mr. Howard, would you like to answer the same question? The biggest issue facing the county, and how would you address it? Biggest issue facing Buncombe. The biggest issue facing Buncombe County is jobs. Without jobs, you don't have anything. You can't pay the exorbitant taxes. You can't provide the children with proper education. We have churches and other civic groups out trying to raise food to feed the children on non-school days while the present county commission gives millions of dollars to beer companies to come here and eventually have 74 jobs. Efficiency of the county commission is very low. In 2010, this county commission had an opportunity to lower the property taxes in this county. They chose not to. And they rode the backs of the people in this county paying those additional taxes to a triple A bond rating. That's how they got the rating. It was nothing they did. All right. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Your time is up. All right. In the budget, how important is the commitment to local education funding? And what issues do you see as more important than education? Mr. Howard, we'll start with you. Education funding should be exactly that. Building new buildings do not ex ed educate children. It's teachers, quality teachers. It's quality custodians, lunchroom personnel. Everybody at every level educates those children. I see nothing more important than the education of our children because they're going to be the taxpayers someday and we need to provide the proper education so they can stay here in this county and make jobs. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gant, in the budget how important is the commitment to local education funding? What issues do you see as more important than education? I, I don't think there's probably anything more important than education. We pay about 28 percent of our budget today toward education and the way Raleigh is cutting and assaulting the public education system, we're probably going to have to raise that. We have to pay our teachers. We have to have facilities that have the technology of the, uh, of the 21st century and, and moving on beyond. We have to support AV Tech. We have to have jobs for people. And the way you do that is you build facilities that help that nurture the jobs, which are going to be in health and services and nursing and we're doing that and we want to continue to do that um, and so nothing to me is more important than education because it leads to jobs and gets I mean, there's so many jobs out there right now that people can't fill because they don't have an education and you talk to I talk to people about every week they say I wish we could hire people but they don't have education so we got to work with the schools we got to work with the community college to make sure that happens All right, thank you Starting with you, Mr. Gant, do you support holding a bond referendum next year to fund the county's Greenways Master Plan? I don't support that next year. I think that Greenways are part of what makes us a great place to live, but we have other priorities right now. One reason I voted to pass and push for the Master Plan to go out there is that it gives people a chance to know what our priorities are and to look at other funding sources. The conservation easement program that I helped initiate several years ago has preserved over about 6,000 acres of farmland and ridge tops and desirable land that otherwise probably would have been developed. What we want to do is to continue that, but we've got to look at economics and I'm not sure the bond is going to be something we can do, but we need to talk about it and figure out how we can move it down the road and continue to provide greenways, farms, and conservation easements before everything gets developed. All right, thank you. Mr. Howard, would you like me to read the question again? I think I understand. Okay. <laughs> uh, I agree with most of what Mr. Gant is saying. However, I have always been told, if you play, you pay. Now why should the taxpayers of this county be burdened with building bike trails walking trails, 
picnic areas all around the county. We, if we have plenty of churches. We have plenty of other organizations that have places they can go. They put the horse or the cart before the horse because I don't think they've looked at the problems that go along with this greenway. The culture in Asheville loves the idea of that greenway. Now, the hardworking people out here, they don't do the things they do down on uh, Lexington Avenue at 11 o'clock on Friday and Saturday nights. They work. So let's put that greenway on hold and spend the money more wisely. All right, thank you, Mr. Howard. All right, let's start with you, Mr. Howard. How is the county government working with small and large businesses and the school systems to identify needs of the employers in our area and the educators, and how are they meeting those needs, or how should they meet those needs? I have a lot of friends who have small businesses. They have pled with the county commissioners to reduce some of these restrictions these requirements that are nothing but money-making facilities for Buncombe County. They can't grow because of the regulations. They need to be reduced. We need to keep the companies who are coming here from other states out of here. We need to give our small businesses preferential treatment so they can hire local people and can build these businesses. That will solve a lot of our problems. Thank you. Mr. Gant? Well, I'm a small business. You know, when I came here, I owed $50,000. I didn't have, I didn't know a soul in town. I had a Ford Pinto, you know, the ones that blew up when you hit them from behind. And that's all I had. I didn't have an office. I practiced law out of the back of my car for a year. So I know about small business. I built my business from scratch. Nobody gave me anything. I understand small business. I'm a member of SIBO. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce Board. I meet with people all the time to discuss the problems. We've got to work together. We have to represent everybody, and we've got to do it in a wise way. Incentives are part of it. But we've also got to make sure the small businesses can hire the people that Mr. Howard's talking about. That is part of county government. And we've got to make it easy for them, and I think we've done that. I have people every day that tell me the county is much easier to deal with than the other municipalities around here. And I hope we keep it that way, because we can still have rules to keep our quality of life, but we, we don't need to strangle business or make it hard for business. All right, thank you, Mr. Gant. Uh, Mr. Howard, a 30-second expansion, if you would. You had said that um, it would, you would support preferential treatment to small businesses to help them build the jobs. What type of treatment are you speaking of? The requirements that are put on our people is not passed on to the other contractors coming here. Nobody checks the immigrants to see if they're here legal. They're not, most of them aren't paying any taxes to have those people. Our people are having to comply with the law because they're getting checked. So we either need to check them all or check none of them and let our people compete with these folks. All right, thank you, Mr. Howard. Mr. Gant, would you like 30 seconds to respond or, or expand on that? Well, counties don't have the right to control immigration policies. What we do have the right to do is to have a living wage for all our people and to make sure when businesses come in here, they pay a living wage, they have health insurance for the employees, and they're good jobs for our people. And that's something we've done. We need to continue doing that. And we need to listen to the small businesses to see what we can do to help them. I think most of the small businesses are, are doing the best they can. It's a tough time for everybody, and the county doesn't want to get in the way and make things worse. All right, thank you, Mr. Gant. All right, we will start with you, sir, Mr. Yant. Uh, regarding our environment, as the landfills continue to grow, 
What are your thoughts on how to keep up with that growth? We are one of two landfills in the United States that has two policies going, and I'll try to explain it in the two minutes. We have one the, minute. One minute. Okay. <laughs> we basically have one of the best landfills. We're trying to create a perpetual landfill so we won't have to tear up land and redo it, basically by composting the factor faster. We also have, t have taken the gas from the from the landfill and created energy for one uh, for I forgot 1,100 homes in the in that area. We're going to keep doing those kind of innovative things because nobody wants a landfill next door. What we can do and must do is continue our recycling efforts. Right now, we're third in the state. We're going to have to keep doing that, keep figuring out ways to to push that envelope, and then we're going to have to do our landfill in a way that is smart and right now people come from all over the country look at that landfill because when the uh, we're just basically recycling like you do a compost pile we're also using the extra gas that comes out for the electricity we're proud of that we're one of the few places in the country doing that right now all right thank you mr gant mr howard i will have to agree with mr gant on the things that's going on at the landfill i'm very proud of that i just think we need to do more of it, be able to gas all the county vehicles, and eventually get to the point that we can sell some of it. Thank you. I want to remind you, if you have a question that you would like asked, to raise your hand and we'll bring a, an index card and pen to you, and they will bring the question up to me. All right, Mr. Howard, we will start with you on this one. Excluding building maintenance and paying employees, what do you believe are the most important areas for expenditures over which the county has control? Paying down the debt. Thank you, sir. Yes, Mr. Dan. Eighty-one percent of our budget is 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 spent on human services, public education, uh, public sa safety, and education. What, we, what we've got to do is put, probably put more money in education. Um, we want to make sure our, our, our staff is paid well. We want to make sure our teachers are paid so they're not looking for jobs. We want people to stay here and put all their energy into being good, good employees for Buncombe County and the schools. Um, we, we have to be careful because there's limit to what people can pay and what we can expect people to do. And again, this is some of the worst times that any of you have seen in your lifetimes. And we're aware of that. That's why we've kept the tax rate the same. We've only dipped into our rainy day or reserve fund one time in eight since I've been on the commission. And that was when the state took all our money when they had a crisis. So we just have to be smart. We've got to be honest with people. We've got to tell them what we're doing and make sure that when we take taxpayers' money, we spend it wisely and we tell them how we spend it. All right, thank you. I'm going to preface this next question that there's a statistic in here that I do not have knowledge if it is accurate or not, but we're going to go with it. Uh, and if you know different, you can brief us. It says non nonprofits currently consume 33% of the county budget, more than education. What would you do to rein in the growth of nonprofits? Mr. Gant? The uh the way, when I got on the board, what we used to, we had a community fund. It's about a million dollars. And basically it was discretionary. There wasn't any accounting. And we get, and we, 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 nonprofits would come to us and we'd say, yes, you're a good nonprofit. We will give you some money. What we've done since then is we, I don't think 33% is probably right. That sounds a little bit high. But what we do, instead of creating a government agency, we contract with nonprofits for specific performance-based uh, uh, performance-based contracts and then if they don't do what they say we want what, what they said they would do and what we expect them to do we drop the contract so I think that when we can partner with people and give people jobs instead of creating another government agency we're ahead of the game Buncombe County has looked in the state we're the model for partnering and contracting with people instead of doing it all ourselves for instance Wake County creates another agency and they're known for that way I think we have a better business model and I think we get more out of our money all right, thank you, Mr. Gant. Mr. Howard? Nonprofits. That's exactly what they're supposed to be. I think if they get money, 
from the taxpayers of this county, they should have to present their books to where they can be examined, to where we can look at them and see how many of them are getting six-figured salaries and above, how many of them are sitting on local boards and vote on nonprofit decisions, such as one of our county commissioners sitting there making over $700,000 a year from the same nonprofit that this county give over $800,000 to. Ask yourself if that's fair. Thank you. All right, we have time for two more questions. The first one, and Mr. Howard, we'll start with you. Specifically, how can the county help create more jobs? Stop. And, I'm sorry, more. Stop the spending. Take them, analyze, evaluate every bit of waste we have, and take that money, give it to our small businesses to expand. Stop worrying about going to Egypt or someplace and try to get somebody to come here and give them eight million dollars to open a business. You give me that eight million dollars and I'll make you a hundred million with it. That's exactly the way you do it. Thank you. Mr. Gant? I think the best investment we can make in order to get more jobs and job opportunities is in education. We got to work with these school board members that you're going to hear in a little bit because if we give our students the skills and the education to do the jobs of the 21st century, we're going to get those jobs. They're going to those jobs will be filled. And if we support AB Tech and do and they've got this big bond that a lot of you may have been against, but it's something we have to invest in the future when we when you talk about what employers are looking, they won't train workforce. We've got to support the teachers. We've got to ask the questions. You've got to go to the Chamber of Commerce and SEBO. You've got to hear what people need, what they want. It's, there's no magic wand to this, but the education is the number one thing I would do to, to help get jobs in our community. All right, relating to this, we'll give you these 30 seconds. Do you support tax incentives? to encourage business to locate to Western North Carolina and Buncombe County specifically. Mr. Howard? No. Mr. Gant? Yes, it's, it's a necessary part of getting in the game. You're not going to get people because, like I said, a lot of the folks I've talked to said we got more money elsewhere. But you get you in the game. You don't get, you don't get considered. You talk to Chamber of Commerce. You talk to business recruiters. It's part of what we need to do. And that's one reason we've had the job growth we've had. Uh, after things have been pretty down, we had about uh, 2,300 jobs come in since 19, since 2009. $650 million of investments out there. All right, thank you. Last question. How should the board address the necessary tax rate increases due to the upcoming property reevaluations? Mr. Gant. Three parts to, to tax. One of them is what's the fair market value. That's something we've authorized. That's going through the first part of the year. The second part is what's the tax rate. That's something we'll make a decision on once we decide the third part, which is what the budget is. I can't, I can't foresee a situation that we're going to be able to raise any rates. We're probably going to have to be revenue neutral because I don't think people can stand any type of increase. But I won't know until we set the budgets because there are three parts to it. What we're going to know in the spring is going to be what the fair market value of your properties are. You haven't had them evaluated for seven years. I don't really know if they're going up or down. Some of them are going to go up, some of them are going to go down like it does every year. But once we get that information, then the board will consider what the rate should be and what the budget should be based on what we have to work with. Thank you. Mr. Howard? If you analyze that budget, and you cut the waste out of it, you won't have to worry about raising people's taxes. Good follow-up question. Where do you see waste? And we'll start with Mr. Gant. I, I think any, anytime you have a $350 million budget, you're gonna have some things you can do differently. 
we just have to keep on looking at that. I'm on the audit committee. I think we have some auditors that really, and CPAs, you got to ask the tough questions. You got to put it out there and let people see what you are spending money on. And and you know, I think people have to say what you are going to cut if that's what, if that's the way you're going to go. I'm certainly not going to cut education. I'm not going to cut public uh, uh, safety. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to cut out the uh, the economic incentives we have. Right, thank you, sir, Mr. Howard. Budgets. Each department has to provide a budget to the Board of County Commissioners. Typically, they write down a number, 50,000 or 50 million, for example. They bring it in, they present it to the county manager, county managers present it to the commissioners. Nobody looks at that. Nobody sees what that $50 million is doing. All right, thank you, sir. Your time is up. Uh, before we excuse these gentlemen, I want to just share with you that next Monday will be the next forum for the Ashley Buncombe League of Women Voters. It will be the County Commission District 1, which is in downtown area, and House District 114. That will take place at 6.30 at the Lord Auditorium at Pack Library on Haywood Street. October 8th will be the East Side District 2 and District 115 at Black Mountain Library. And then on October 15th, District 3 and District 116. And that will be at the Skyland Volunteer uh, Fire Department, which is at Nine Miller Road at the intersection of Hendersonville and Long Shoals Road. We're gonna take just a short, less than five minute break just to rearrange a few things. I'm sure Mr. Howard and Mr. Gant will be out back along with our other candidates uh, who are participating in the meeting.